Ord-Oracle.com. Now, we are joined on the Tom O'Brien Show every Tuesday and Thursday by Tim Ord. Now, Tim has been in the game, uh, I think, for longer than I've been alive, which is pretty cool to say. And uh, we love having him on. I mean, I strongly value his analysis. He teaches me a ton every time he's on. And uh, it's fantastic. So I strongly recommend going to check him out over at the ord Oracle. Dot com and uh, we are joined by Tim Ord. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me on again. So, absolutely, we dive in here, see what's going on. I think so. All right, uh, chart number one. Fantastic. Uh, uh, the bottom window is the. This is looks at the bigger trend. This is the monthly chart. Chart goes back to uh, to mid two thousand nineteen. Looks like about that anyhow. And so, all you start looking at the big chart. To see what the big picture is and see if there's any bad signs starting to show up. And so far, there's not. Uh, the bottom window is the SPX VIX ratio. And normally, when you go in into highs, the VIX starts to rise, you know, sometimes weeks before, a lot of times months before. And that's the reason why I do it on a monthly chart. The monthlies are act more accurate than the weeklies. And actually, the weeklies right now are giving kind of a bearish sign, but the monthlies have not yet. So on a short-term basis, the trend's still up. But to, to get a signal for this type of indicator, when the SPX VIX ratio makes lower highs as the VIX, as the uh, excuse us, as the SPX makes higher highs, that's a negative divergence. That's what happens near highs. And right now we got the SPX VIX ratio going higher. Actually, it's kind of going sideways here over the last month, while still the SPX is still making higher highs. That could be a warning sign, but it's not a bearish sign. It's not. It's kind of a neutral sign, mm -hmm. but it's not a sign that you act on as far as going short or anything, because uh, we can still have the VIX go lower before the month's out, and still have this ratio go higher. Uh, so we'll see. But right now, it's uh, that ratio is saying not bearish, but uh, but it's not really bullish either. Uh, so at the moment, I think the trend's still up. We got some short term. Uh, let's flip to chart two. We'll go to the short-term picture. Totally. So here, mid-term picture is uh, it can turn to bullish. It's too soon to say, um, but it also could be bearish. But you know, on a short-term basis, it trends up. So on chart two, we're looking at the the short-term picture, and if you notice, the top window is the SPY, and that chart. If you look over the last 10 days, that virtually has gone exactly sideways. It hasn't gone up, it hasn't gone down. And I've seen these patterns before when the market even hits a low, goes sideways, or hits a high, goes sideways. And I put uh, some Fibonacci relationships on there compared to the last low, which was basically uh, late May. I put a Fibonacci, uh, those blue lines across there are Fibonacci levels. Yeah. And the market has not even pulled back to the 38.2% retracement. It's, it's not even pulled back probably 15%. I see. Uh, so, uh, so, and also, I got colored in there um, in the light pink, the areas where panic has formed in the trend. So that's what, what panic, trend only forms at bottoms. And I see, I said this a lot of times on the show, and when the trend's at 1.2 or higher, they've got a couple of 1.19s in there, but that's close enough. But at yeah, 1.2 or higher shows there's panic in the market. When there's panic, you're near a low. And I shaded that pink area where the panic occurred. So we're actually in a support area. Uh, so what the market's actually doing here without virtually no retracement whatsoever is building cause for the next, uh, next rally higher. And how high is high? I don't know. Um, I did a, a lot of times these sideways move where there's virtually no retracement. A lot of times that marks a halfway move, a uh, halfway point of the move up. And if you do that, that from the uh, it'd be the May low, which yeah. uh, that's the first blue line at the bottom there. It looks like about five eighteen round off numbers five seventeen. And you go up to the high, which is about 547. That's, that's about 30 S and P points, or SPX points is 300 points. If you do the, if you take that as the halfway point, of the next move up, there's about a 5.5 percent 
rally coming yeah. uh, for that analysis, uh, that works out. That's just projection. It's not, you know, a recommendation. That's exactly where it's going to go. But a lot of times these halfway moves do point at the halfway mark. So in July, seasonality-wise, around the July 4th time, way, time frame, there's usually a good rally right around – before sometimes it starts before July 4th, sometimes it starts a little bit after, but they call it the summer rally. And so we're going into a favorable seasonality period right now. And we've got all the ingredients for a rally to, to actually start. we got panic in the trend readings. we got a Fibonacci relationship that firstly is not even pulled back, you know, 10, 15 percent. Right. Market's gone uh, sideways for 10 days in a row. That's counting today. Uh, we're up a little bit, but in general, we we haven't really broke out yet. Uh, so we're building quite a bit of energy to push push higher here, even, uh, even for the short term. And if you look at the VIX right now, uh, not on this chart, but if you look on the VIX real time, we're uh, touching uh, recent new lows. Uh, so all that stuff says we're probably going to start a rally. But at if, if the starting today, maybe maybe I'll wait. You know, Thursday, whatever, but it's probably going to start in this time frame right now. It's at least going to go for a couple of weeks, maybe, uh, you know, maybe into August. I don't know. Uh, so, but uh, short term picture is actually looking pretty good. I, we're heading into a break here, I see. We could wait. Yeah. I So, I want to ask one more time when, obviously, when panic forms, you're at the bottom, right? Because everyone's trying to sell and move out, and you're going to lose steam for that. But so when it's not retracing back to, let's just say, the 382 on the Fibonacci, that's indicative of a halfway move. Maybe we can just go over that one more time. You said it clearly, but I just want to, you know, for my personal edification, want to hear that again. Uh, if we can go over it just one more time when you get back. All right. Sounds good. Folks, okay. stay tuned. We will be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, we are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. We were just going over this spy chart here. And Tim, I just wanted to hear one time, one more time. When you're... Right, uh, yeah, right. If you're right, having the sideways right, movement, anyhow, it's not talk, retracing. You're going to go... I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. Uh, we're talking about the retracement. In other words, the market's gone sideways there. There's no retracement. Right. It's kind of said in the books, I guess, when a, when a market retraces 50% or actually 38%, Point two or less, a lot of times that's the halfway point to the move up. If the market goes down to 50% retracement, then it can still do a halfway point of the move up, but a lot of times it makes a double top. And if the market retraces 38.2 uh, or 61.8% uh, retracement, a lot of times that's a deep retracement against the previous rally. And that suggests the next high will be a double top. So my point, the less a market retraces, the more stronger that market is. Because if it can't even pull back into consolidation, um, then that, uh, for, put it this way, the less the market pulls back, the more stronger that market is to the upside. Fantastic. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It is does. That, Thank you so much. That's awesome. All right. Well, we so can move to chart take three a look as well. At, uh, chart three then. Yeah, absolutely. See, All right, uh, I got this chart goes uh, goes back first part of the year, or whatever. And I kind of uh, circled in red there uh, retracements. All of them. Uh, well, actually, what I'm trying to do here, if you go to the bottom window, it's the uh, Bollinger Band width. So as the Bollinger Band width contracts, in other words, comes together. And that's how that's the bottom uh, that's the bottom indicator. So when the when the Bollinger bands are what I call pinching, so the market is, is a lot of ops that goes on. When it's pinching, there's a large move coming. When the Bollinger bands are wide apart, then a lot of times the market's going to go into a narrow range. Right now, uh, I pointed out the previous times when the upper and lower bands are the closest level together, and and that's those blue lines across the chart. And they usually come right before a move in the market. Uh, sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. It doesn't really give you the direction. But right now, we got a big pinch in the Bollinger Bands on the dailies, right? Where actually, this is a 1.95 uh, minute chart. So it's, it's, um, 
it's actually a two-bar chart for the day. Uh, so it's, it's what, 60 minutes, so that's about about half of day of trading in 1. 100, 195 minutes, about a half day of trading. Mm -hmm. But you can see the Bollinger Bands are coming together um, on, on the current um, setup we're having right now. And that also just a big, uh, not, I, I hate to say violent move, but uh, uh, we're about to end the sideways consolidation and end into an impulse wave. And so, and since we haven't not really pulled back at all, uh, it could be a pretty good rally starting at, I don't know, any day. You know, it could be even starting today. I don't know. Uh, doesn't have to be today. Could wait until next week. But very short term, this market's about ready to, to take off to the upside because the Bollinger Bands are pinching, and we got, according to uh, chart two, we got panic in the in the region we're in right now, and so panic only comes up bottom. So the only direction this market really can go is up on the short term basis, and the Bollinger Band pinch kind of gives gets a reinforcement of idea that uh, we're going to see some energy in the market here in the coming weeks, and it looks like it'll be to the upside. So right on. Um, could could be kind of fun for the next you know two, three, four, five weeks. Don't know how long the rally will last, but it could be fun. We can switch now to uh, the gold market if you want. Absolutely, yeah. We or, also or you got we have some people. You got questions on the S and P's. We can go back and you know uh, if, if you want to have no, you have no questions I, on the S P. No, I think that was great. Um, and everyone else, I'm reading in the YouTube and in uh, some of the private messages in the den. That was that was awesome. We do actually have some people asking about uh, at least some of the gold and silver miners as well, just overall. So I'm, I'm sure they're looking forward to hearing uh, this next segment as well. All right. Okay. Uh, this is a bigger chart. We showed it in the past. We actually talked about it going into May 31st, which May 31st uh, was a, a major signal on the monthly charts because you got to wait for the close of the month for the signal to generate. And on May 31st, uh, signals were generated on this indicator on actually two different types of indicators. But the bottom window is a monthly cumulative up-down volume with the Bollinger Band. And the next window higher is a uh, cumulative monthly advanced decline and with the Bollinger Band. And when you get a close above the mid-Bollinger Band on both those indicators, that triggers a multi-month, if not a multi-year buy signal. And that buy signal came on actually as it jumped, if you go to the top window, as it jumped the neckline of a head and shoulders bottom. So we're now above the neckline. Neckline depends how you draw it. It could be 33, 34, but in this vicinity, that's where the neckline lies. You can actually, you can make it draw it at 32 if you can stretch the rules a little bit. But you know, we've jumped above the neckline and we've been virtually gone nowhere over the last uh, couple of weeks. We're kind of just holding power padding that holding power normally you have a consolidation then you have an impulse wave then you have a consolidation or a narrow range then you have an impulse wave so this little sideways move that's been going on uh all of june and uh, uh so far is actually building energy either it's going to go up or down but we already got uh these two indicators already jumped above the mid Bollinger Band for the only direction to go right now, as far as the, the gold market is up, because uh, these monthly indicators really don't whip around. They get above the mid Bollinger Band and they stay there for months. They get below the mid Bollinger Band and they stay there for months. So they don't usually go above and below it back and forth. Uh, sometimes those weekly charts do, which will flip to chart five. Yeah, give me one second here. Perfect. We have it up right now. Okay. Chart five is those same two indicators, but on a weekly time frame. And it's a little bit more whippy in, in, in the weekly charts. But what I want to point out is a far right window. I have a kind of a blown up view on a far right window. And the top window is a GDX, and I circled it in red. I have a red line or a red arrow pointing down on that. Uh, yeah. What I want to point out, though, if you know these two indicators, this is on a weekly time frame, are actually kind of going, they retrace a little bit, but they're holding up against their their highs pretty much. Um, actually, both of them, 
uh, second window up from the bottom is the up-down volume, and, and the third window up from the bottom uh, is the advanced decline, and both of them are cumulative. And even though the market's retraced here, these indicators are pretty much holding uh, close to their highs, even though they retrace a little bit. Uh, and the, and the S, or GDX has retraced some. These indicators are holding very strong, suggesting the up-down volume and, and uh, advanced decline indicators are actually uh, building strength in the market. So uh, it looks to me that we've got another impulse wave coming here pretty quick. Fantastic. Tim, stay right there. We have a short summing up next, but we have one more chart and a little bit of this to do, and I know we all want to hear that if you can stay. Yep. Folks, do. we will be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Stay right there. Welcome back, folks. We are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. We were just going over some stuff to do with the GDX. Uh, Tim, we only have a short segment, but I'd love to hear uh, your kind of thoughts on this before we end the show. All right. Uh, let's go to chart six. This is a, this is a short-term view of what's going on. And uh, the bottom window seems to work the best. It's the 50-day average of the up-down volume. And this indicator, as long as it stays above zero, the uptrend's intact. We got a buy signal from this indicator. It looks like about first of May, uh, first of April, and it's still on a buy signal, even though this market uh, GDX has actually pulled back from 37 to 33, whatever. Uh, the, the, the internals are still actually very strong and uh, suggest that if you're long, you should stay long. Uh, so I think the sideways consolidations is probably just that. It's probably, uh, um, you know, could, could, I don't know, I haven't done the retracement yet, you know, like we did with the S&Ps. Right. But, the, you know, eyeballing it here, retracement looks like about 38.2% retracement. That suggests that sideways move could be the halfway point of the move up. But this head and shoulders, uh, the top window is the GDX, and this head and shoulders pattern, which is what I think it is, has an upside target, a major target around 45. Uh, so, uh, and a lot of times July and October are very important dates for the gold market. A lot of times you'll see lows in July, tops in October, or vice versa, highs in July and lows in October. I think this is a low in October, or, or the low in July, and probably a rally into October is what it's starting to look like. So uh, I think this this has been kind of dull here, which is good. It's always dull before the... I guess a rally, and then when it gets really frothy, it's, it's time to, uh, to to unload. We're not even close to that, but this is more evidence that we're probably at support. Uh, this indicator at the bottom window is above zero, suggesting this rally is not done yet. So uh, it's probably a good place to buy right around this vicinity. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. That was great. All right, talk to you Thursday. Absolutely. See you Thursday, Tim. Folks, well, we won't see it Thursday, the 4th of July. you got to enjoy that. We will see Tim Tuesday. Again, go to ord-oracle.com. Folks, thank you so much for joining us today. It was fantastic. We have a short day tomorrow off Thursday. See you again Friday.